testing one, two.
with your merciful love and we shall exult and rejoice all our days let the favor of the Lord our God be upon us and upon the work of our hands hallelujah my dear sisters and brothers welcome to participate in this marriage of our dear brother and sister Nino and Sweta, along with their parents and along with all our fathers here, we pray for them. And so let us begin this celebration in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your Dear family and friends, we have gathered here today to bear witness to the sacred union of Nino and Shweta. We have come here with hearts filled with joy and much happiness to rejoice with them in their delight of having found strong bond and love for each other. May the Lord Almighty bless and support their decision to commit themselves to a lifelong relationship through the sacrament of holy matrimony. 
and may he strengthen and seal their love for each other. Let us all pray for them in this Eucharistic celebration that they may cherish this day, remain faithful to each other, and also pray that the Lord showers his choicest blessings on them now and forever. With these beautiful words, let us now ask the Lord to set us free from any bondage to sin and evil so that we may be able to enter into this Eucharist worthily and that we in our prayers for Ninio and Sweta, they may have the grace of the Lord to be truly wonderfully wedded today. Let us ask the Lord for his goodness and mercy.
let us pray. Be attentive to our prayers, O Lord, and in your kindness, pour out your grace on these your servants, Nino and Shweta, that coming together before your altar, they may be confirmed in love for one another through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Let us all be seated and listen attentively to the Word of God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Beloved, walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her, that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of the water with the word, so that he might present the church to himself in splendor, without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that she might be holy and without blemish. In the same way, husbands should love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself, for no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it, just as Christ does the church, because we are members of his body. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This mystery is profound, and I am saying that it refers to Christ and the church. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Oh, it's 
reading from the Gospel of St. John. Jesus said to his disciples, As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Shweta and Ninyo, this is your great day. And with you is a great day for your parents. They've been waiting for this day. And not only for them, but for the two families. This is something that not just you and your parents have done, but it is God who has done this in your life. Everything good comes from God. And you too, who are so good, have been brought together by God so that this goodness may continue in a way that only God has planned it for you. All things happen in God. God wants to share with us his goodness. And that's what we long for in every relationship of ours at every level. But this has been granted to us by God himself. When he created us, he created us in Jesus, the Word. And it is in Jesus that he has brought us again in that communion with him because we could not use our freedom in a proper way. Why? Because we did not know how to obey. And so in Jesus, we have learned to be one with the Father, who is one with Jesus, and therefore when we are one with Jesus, we are one with one another. And this is a sacrament, the gift that God has given you both, something that you had longed for, at each stage, we have been initiated. Your parents brought you to the church to be clothed into Jesus so that Jesus in you can keep growing as you kept growing physically, mentally, and spiritually, and emotionally. Then he came and he gave you the strength to live with him through communion and the sacrament of reconciliation. Then he confirmed you at confirmation. And now he is giving you that freedom to commit yourselves in him to one another. And that's what you're doing. The readings are telling us just that. The way Jesus has loved is the way he is going to love through you each other. How did he love us? He united himself in his body to all of humanity, to each one of us, by being one with us in all things but sin. We have heard that. That means he did not disobey the Father. And every day during these days, we hear Jesus telling us that he and the Father are one. If you have seen me, you have seen the Father. 
what I do is not what I'm doing, but it is the Father who is doing it through me. And this is the grace that he has given you today to commit yourselves to each other as Jesus committed himself to the Father. Just as the Father has loved me, so I love the Father, and you abide in my love. So you abide in him, and this oneness with God will continue in your relationship, which will energize you, which will give you meaning. Because now, the two of you have been brought up in two different ways in your two different households. It is wonderful. Love sort of unites you. But now, as you keep growing in intimacy, you will encounter these inner structures of behavioral patterns, which sometimes will clash. It is in such moments that you must be aware of what you're feeling. And these feelings you must communicate, you must surrender to Jesus, so that he who has died to set you free from these bondages, which might later on create more tensions, they are given to him and he sets you free from them. So be able to be aware of them, surrender them to him, and you will see that you will continue to grow in the way he has loved us. And how does he love us? It's always in a gift of sacrifice. There is no love without sacrifice. You love anything, you have to sacrifice yourself for it. If you love swimming, then you have to sacrifice many things, go there, discipline yourself, get into it. If you love cooking, that's what it is. If you love accounting, you see there is a discipline. And in that discipline, there is always a sacrifice. But the sacrifice in a relationship is much more. It is something that gives you life. And that is where the Lord in his first reading through the letter to the Ephesians has told us how he brings about this purification so that one can continuously grow in God's love, which brings about patience, kindness, as you'll have written it there. It is always understanding, accepting, encouraging. These are all things that will happen to you, not because of you, but because of God's presence in you. And he will make this happen. It will come automatically. But there is need for you to be centered on him rather than being centered on self. And you will see that once you do this, you will energize yourself in the works that you're doing. Each one of you is making a contribution to society in your own particular way. And that will become even more better because you have the strength of the other's presence in you, one another's presence. So my dear sister, Shweta and brother Nino, remember that love always means self-giving. You give yourself to one another, but give yourself to each other in Jesus, because that becomes easy. So you'll be able to understand, you'll be able to accept, you'll be able to be patient. These are things with that. It's not only that, it is also self-effacing. You don't think of yourself. It is said, when you love your wife, you're loving actually yourself. It is said there today. So when you are centered on her, when you, Shweta, are centered on him, you will see that you will love each other as one's own body. And that gift is given to you today so that you may grow and flourish in this relationship. So self-giving, self-effacing, self-sacrificing love is what you are gifted with today through Jesus who dwells in you. And you're going to be able to give yourself to each other for this. Look at all of them who are here. They will understand what I've been saying because they've been living all these years and they know what it means to be able to love each other as he has loved us. We shall all pray for you that this may happen to you. 
but there are small little things that you need to be attentive to. Small things, like being able to say please to each other. It may become redundant, but don't worry. Every moment is a new moment. So make it new and say, please, can you do this? With a smile, it'll work better. If the other is not able to smile because of some of the other things, don't worry. Be patient and kind. It'll happen. And after some time, things will happen. And when they do happen, the way it should or not done, 100%, not 100%, just be kind enough to say, thank you. It is wonderful. A thank you will work wonders. And once you get into this habit and practice, you will also get into another habit, which is very important because you will hurt each other in some way or the other, whether you know it or not. And when you see the other not so pleasant, something has happened, you can sense it, what's gone wrong? Say, I'm sorry if I've been the cause for you to be down. Whatever they may say to each other, you'll, you'll understand it. But that is how to carry on. Don't let the day pass by without asking pardon. Because these small little things will simply escalate into big problems one day. And then it becomes very difficult. There are so many who are having that experience because they've not been humble and simple, but been proud. No, just be simple and humble and you will grow in this love which you will cherish so much. You may have your parents as examples for this or some others, but it's always a struggle. But when you do it in the Lord, it becomes easy for he has said to us, my yoke is easy, my burden light. So remember always to thank God for whatever is going on in your life, whether good, bad or ugly, thank him because when you thank him, he will transform it. He's always doing it because evil is at work to take you away from the good. So thank him for it and he will bring you back. He'll take you on the right path. He's the way. And in his truth, he will clarify what's going to you so that you can live your life more fully in Jesus. We shall all pray for them. But remember, at night, spend just five minutes. I've been saying this to everyone. Just five minutes, surrendering your thoughts, your feelings, good, bad, ugly, to Jesus. And experience his power, presence coming into you for just five minutes. And in the morning, do the same thing so that you can orient yourself for the day. The whole night will be a moment of being charged with Jesus. For he truly is our life, our way, and the truth. And you will see that through the day, automatically, his presence will lead you and guide you. We shall pray for a little while for them, that they may really one day have that great experience which they have each day, each moment, that they will be fulfilled in Jesus and come to the fullness of life in Him. Let us all spend a few moments, close our eyes, just be present to God who is with us, for we are assembled here in His name, and we are assembled to pray for Nino and Shweta. Let us pray that God, who has brought them together, may really groom them, make them more and more internally free so that his spirit, which is of love, may permeate their body, mind and spirit and that they may love each other as he in them will love them. And so having said this, I call upon the two witnesses to come forward. Please come forward. The rest of us kindly rise and we shall all 
pray and support them as they commit themselves to one another. Ninyo and Shweta, you have come together in this church so that the Lord may seal and strengthen your love in the presence of the church's minister and this community. Christ abundantly blesses this love. He has already consecrated you in baptism and now he enriches and strengthens you by a special sacrament so that you may assume the duties of marriage in mutual and lasting fidelity. So in the presence of the church, I ask you to state your intentions so that those present may witness them and pray for their fulfillment. Ninyo and Shweta, have you come here freely and without reservation to give yourself to each other in marriage? Yes, I have. Yes, I have. Will you love and honor each other as husband and wife for the rest of your lives? Yes, I will. Yes, I will. Will you accept children lovingly from God and bring them up according to the law of Christ and His Church? Yes, I will. Yes, I will. Ninyo and Shweta, since it is your intention to enter into marriage, join your right hands and declare your consent before God and His Church. I, Nino, take you, Shweta, to be my wife. I promise to be true to you in good times and in bad, in sickness and in health. I will love you and honor you all the days of my life. I, Shweta, take you, Nino, to be my husband. I promise to be true to you in good times and in bad in sickness and in health. I will love you and honor you all the days of my life. You have declared your consent before the church. May the Lord in his infinite goodness strengthen your consent and fill you both with his blessing. What God has joined, men must not divide. Amen. Lord, bless Ninyo and Shweta and consecrate their married life. May these rings be a symbol of their faith in each other and a reminder of their unconditional love and fidelity. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Shweta, take this ring as a sign of my love and fidelity in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Ninyo, take this ring as a sign of my love and fidelity in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
kindly rise. Prayers of the faithful. We now bring our prayers to our loving Father, praying specially for Nino and Sweta, who have been now married, and for their families. Let our response be. Lord, we pray for our newly wedded couple, Nino and Shweta. May their new home be filled with your presence, love and peace, that they may live a life of unconditional love and much care and respect each other. Bestow them with strength to overcome all the trials in their married life. May their daily prayer and faith in each other strengthen the bond of unity between them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord we pray. Heavenly Father, we pray for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, Philip Neri, Cardinal Ferrau, bishops, religious, and the laity, that they may continue to lead us to a deeper faith and stronger love for the church. Let us pray to the Lord. God our Father, shower abundant blessings on the parents of Nino and Shweta, who having given them life in the beginning, who having through their love, much care and sacrifices, have nurtured and molded them into fine persons that they are today, will now, in love, gratitude and joy, see them build a new life together. And may they continue to be a source of assurance for each other in moments of need. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For siblings, relatives, and friends all over the world, and those especially present here today, who have given Nino and Shweta care, love, and support, which has been a source of inspiration for them, that God may continue to watch over them, keep them safe and healthy. Also for all the families throughout the world, and for lasting peace among all people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our For the grandparents and the faithful departed of the families of Nino and Shweta, who would have loved to share in the joy and happiness of this day. May they enjoy total fulfillment in eternal life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And may I ask all of you just to close your eyes and whisper a little prayer for Shweta and Inyo. loving Father, we are so grateful for all those prayers which have risen from our hearts that you have inspired in us through your spirit. But there are so many other gifts that you would like to shower on Inyo and Shweta. We ask you, Lord, to open their hearts and minds so that they will receive all those blessings and graces that you have in store for them for today and for the rest of their life. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
start, start. Fruits and flowers. Love is a flower which turns into fruit at marriage. Lord bless Nino and Sweta and may their love bloom like these fruits and flowers we offer you today. We pray that they spread fragrance of your love wherever they go and that they may live their lives fruitful in your service. Rosary and Bible. These are instruments that help us strengthen our faith. May the Holy Bible enlighten their hearts and minds. May the Rosary be an eyed in their spiritual lives as we meditate on the life, death, and resurrection of the Lord. We pray that Ninio and Sweta resolve that they always respect the word of God and continue reciting the rosary daily as a sign of love for each other and for the Blessed Mother. Bread and wine. Lord, we offer you this bread and wine. These symbols remind us of the many hands who have labored in preparing this bread and wine. Similarly, the parents, along with the family members and friends, who have assisted Nino and Sweta to grow into fine human beings. Bless them all, Lord. We also pray that this nourishment of your body and blood from these gifts of bread and wine be the spiritual food for Nino and Sweta to live together the journey of love. Pray, my dear sisters and brothers, that this our sacrifice and offering of ourselves and our prayers may be acceptable to God, our loving Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands 
for the grace and glory of his name, for our good and good of all this holy church. Receive in your kindness, Lord, the offerings we bring in gladness before you. And in your fatherly love, watch over those who have joined in a sacramental covenant through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son. Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For in him you have made a new covenant with your people, so that, as you have redeemed man and woman by the mystery of Christ's death and resurrection, so in Christ you might make them partakers of divine nature and joint heirs with him of heavenly glory. In the union of husband and wife, you give a sign of Christ's love and his gift of grace so that the sacrament we celebrate might draw us back more deeply into the wondrous design of your love. And so with the angels and saints, we praise you and without end we acclaim holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time Jesus was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the talus, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the talus of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of Jesus' death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit.
Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Philip Neri, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, Saint Francis Xavier, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be the choirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O oh God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. For the first time, as husband and wife, Shweta and Ninio are going to pray as one with Jesus, keeping all their intentions in mind. And we, we shall pray for them, that God's blessings which are there may be granted to them. Let us now all say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Let us pray to the Lord for this bride and groom who come to the altar as they begin their married life. And partaking of the body and blood of Christ, that they may always be bound together by love for one another. We shall pray for them now. Holy Father, who formed man in your own image, male and female, you created them, so that as husband and wife, united in body and heart, they might fulfill their calling in the world, O oh God, who, to reveal the great design you formed in your love, willed that the love of spouses for each other should foreshadow the covenant you graciously made with your people, so that by fulfillment of the sacramental sign, the mystical marriage of Christ with his church might become manifest in the union of husband and wife among your faithful. Graciously stretch out your hand over these your servants, Ninyo and Shweta, we pray, and pour into their hearts the power of the Holy Spirit. Grant, O Lord, that as they enter upon this sacramental union, they may share with each other the gift of your love, and by being for each other a sign of your presence, become one heart and one mind. May they also sustain, O Lord, by their deeds, the home they are forming, and prepare their children to become members of your heavenly household by raising them in the way of the gospel. Graciously crown with your blessings your daughter Shweta, so that, by being a good wife, she may bring warmth to her home with a love that is pure and adore, adorn it with welcoming graciousness. Bestow a heavenly blessing also, O Lord, 
on Ninyo, your servant, that he may be a worthy, good and faithful husband and a provident father. Grant, Father, that desiring to approach your table as a couple join in marriage in your presence, they may one day have the joy of taking part in your heavenly great banquet through Christ our Lord. Amen. Kindly rise. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, where you live forever and never. Amen. The peace of Jesus be with you always. And United to Jesus, let's turn to each other with some sign of peace. This is Jesus, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us all to everlasting life. Amen.
Dear Lord Jesus, thank you for this beautiful day. You have fulfilled the desire of our hearts to be together in this life. Heavenly Father, we acknowledge your blessings upon our marriage. We pray that your blessings will always rest upon our home, that your joy, peace, and contentment will dwell within us as we live together in unity, peace, and harmony, and that all who enter our home may experience the strength of your love. Lord Jesus, give us courage, strength, to face all challenges that we may encounter in life. Bless us in all days to come and help us to fulfill our promise made here today. Keep us safe from evil. We make this prayer to you through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. everyone. Good evening, everyone. My husband and I would like to take this opportunity to first thank God for bringing us together through the Holy Sacrament of Matrimony. Thank you to my parents for being with me always, supporting and guiding me. I would also like to thank Nino's parents for accepting me with open arms and always being there for Nino and me. A big thank you to our celebrants, Father Patricio Fernandez, Father Shavito Correa, Father Nigel Afonso, Father Alan Norona, Father John Mascarenas, Father Savio Gomes, Father Walter Disa, Father Victor Vegas, Father Caetano Mascarenas, Father and Father Savio Gomes for celebrating this Holy Eucharistic at Basilica of Born Jesus. Your prayers and bless blessings have really helped us and we kindly request you to continue praying for us so that God may bless us on this new journey we have started. 
thank you to Pilar Coyer, led by Reverend Father Peter Cardozo, for the time, effort, and heart you put into making this Eucharistic celebration one with song and praise. I would like to thank all those who took part in the liturgy today, from the readers to singers. I would like to thank Baptist decorator for the beautiful decoration and Slanny and Mark photography for capturing this precious moment on our big day. I would also like to thank Molita Caterer for the lovely snacks that will be provided to each and every one here as we step out of the church in a few moments now. Lastly, I want to thank all of you who are present with us today. Many of you have come a long way to make your presence felt, and we thank you for your time and effort. As we embark on this next chapter of our lives, we are grateful that we have your love and support. As we leave here, may the true love of God be with us and his wisdom guide us always. Thank you. Kindly rise. Having been made partakers at your table, we pray, O Lord, that those who are united by the sacrament of marriage may always hold fast to you and proclaim your name to the world through Christ our Lord. Before I give you the final blessing, I would also like to thank all of you for choosing, especially in you and Shweta, this blessed and hallowed place, the shrine of St. Francis Xavier. I know how much they have put into making this liturgy very meaningful. Their mother was here very often and saw to it that everything is in place. And I'm sure she's very happy today. Let us thank God for her and for all of you. I'd like to pray for you through the intercession of St. Francis Xavier. And so while you stand, you can participate in this prayer for Nino and for Shweta, the newly wedded couple. O devoted servant of God, St. Francis Xavier, your heart was burning with love for Jesus. Impelled by this love, you went from country to country and spent yourself unto death proclaiming the name of Jesus and the good news of salvation. That is why the Father filled you with glory in heaven and preserved your body from corruption here on earth. Filled with joy for these unique gifts, we join you in praising the Father. And now we ask your intercession for Ninyo and for Shweta and their families and friends. We ask you to obtain for us the fulfillment of these desires if they are pleasing to the Father. And for everything, together with you, we praise the Father through Jesus in the Spirit. Amen. Bow your heads and receive this blessing. May God, the all-powerful Father, grant you his joy and bless you in your children. Amen. Amen. May the only begotten Son of God stand by you with compassion and good in good times and in bad. Amen. Amen. And may the Holy Spirit of God always pour forth his love into your hearts. Amen. Amen. And may Almighty God bless all of you and all of us here gathered, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us go in the joy and peace of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Oh.
Yeah. Uh-huh. 